Hello, I'm Sam from Sound on Sound magazine. The NAM Show is a musical instrument trade fair come super spreader event held annually in Anaheim, California, where manufacturers can meet dealers and distributors, showcase new products and develop tinnitus across four days in January. It's the perfect place to discover the latest in everything from ukuleles to euphoniums. But since I hate ukuleles and can't play brass, I went looking for new microphones. The biggest news in this department was the launch of a new manufacturer. AIM Audio are launching with two models called the Inspire and the Essence. At heart, these are good old-fashioned large diaphragm capacitor mics, but there's a lot of innovation in the design. You can switch between transformer balanced and electronically balanced output stages. And on the multi-pattern Inspire, you can press a button to flip things around so that the front becomes the back and vice versa. There's a super clever magnetic shock mount and the pricing looks extremely competitive. Watch this space. Not everyone makes a song and dance about new products. A lot of companies these days do what they call a soft launch. Microtech Gefell took this to such an extreme that I don't think anyone actually noticed they launched a new product. But in fact, it's a pretty big deal. The new Generation 4 range is a series of pencil mics with four interchangeable capsules and two bodies. The MV400L body is particularly interesting because it uses a Limo connector instead of the usual XLR, and as a consequence, it's absolutely tiny. Just over the way were Sherps, who were showing their Desert Island stereo set, and Soyuz Microphones, who announced a whole raft of new stuff that they're calling the Tulian Explosion. They then did a runner, so when I went to see them on the Sunday, the stand was gone. Which is a shame, because one of the things they announced is an ambisonic mic, using their own small diaphragm capsules, which has the potential to be extremely cool. There were quite a few boutique mic manufacturers at NAMM as usual. Monheim Mics were showing pictures of a new model called the Fresh, which looks a bit like the old Lomo 19A9. And THE had not only a U47 alike, but also a microphone PSU that can be switched between valve and solid state operation. Apparently the valve mode introduces something like the rectifier sag you get on valve guitar amps, which could be interesting. Elsewhere, SE Electronics unveiled cardioid-only versions of two of their most popular mics. The T1 and SE4100 have the same capsules as the T2 and SE4400, but only the front diaphragm is energised, making them cost-effective alternatives for those who don't need multiple polar patterns. MXL mics have a new series they're calling the AB Shootout range, where the idea is you can select different tonalities by flicking a switch. The CR is a valve mic with two voicings, and the V67GM has three, so an ABC shootout mic. Meanwhile, in the live sound hall, Aston Microphones were showing their new dynamic stage mic. The Apex is available in three different finishes, it has two switchable voicings to suit different singers, and it's both an active and a passive mic. A 20 dB gain boost kicks in automatically when it detects phantom power. Finally, one of my favourite NAM characters is Mark Fuchsman of Samar Audio. He's got really into designing lollipop mics where there is no housing surrounding the capsule, so nothing to reflect or block the sound. Large diaphragm lollipop mics aren't new, but small diaphragm models like these are certainly a bit out of the ordinary. And what better to mount them on than Samar's ingenious magnetic levitating shock mount? It has two captive magnets inside the barrel which try to repel each other, so the inner part is essentially floating magnetically. It's so cool, I almost don't care if it works or not. Thanks for watching. Stick around and catch our other NAM roundups where I'll be finding out what's new in monitoring, studio hardware, and software and synths. <laughs>